Hello and welcome to Hornbill TV and in today's special Hornbill TV presentation we have a very special guest with us. He is also the director of the American Center in Kolkata and also the public affairs officer in the US Consulate General Kolkata. He is Mr. Adrian Pratt and today we will be speaking more on the US Indo relations and also since Sir is in charge of the East and the Northeast as a representative of the US, we'll try and find out more as to what relation and also what plans he has for the Northeast. So first of all, welcome to Nagalind, sir. Uh, it's so a pleasure much. having you over and especially at Hornbill TV. So, sir, would this be your maiden visit to Nagaland? It is. Um, I have been trying to come here for a long time. Um, I worked at the U.S. Embassy in New Delhi about eight years ago and was supposed to come to the Hornbill Festival then. Um, but for one reason or another, it didn't work out. So ever since then, I've been trying to come back to um, Nagaland for the Hornbill Festival. All right. So, so I mean, uh, how did you come across the Hornbill Festival? And uh, I mean, like we do get like uh, a serious number of tourists coming from the U.S. just to visit the festival. So was this through word of mouth or did you happen by chance to see pictures of it? I happen to see pictures of it. I have uh, a lot of friends who are wonderful photographers and they say that the opportunity to come to the Hornbill Festival to take pictures is just uh, once in a lifetime. There's so much color, so much tradition and so many truly unique sites. So um, I'm a bit of a photographer as well, so right. I'm really looking forward to it. So, uh, so on your maiden visit, did you happen to get your wife and your children, your two sons? Um, unfortunately not, no. They're um, all in um, America at the yeah. moment. Um, they will be coming here for Christmas um, to Calcutta. Um, so, but I don't think we'll make it out to, to Nagaland. But um, once, once I get back, I'm sure they'll want to come visit. <laughs> all right. All, all right, so now getting to the pertinent part of this uh, interview and this talk. I mean, sir, you joined as the director of American Center Kolkata on the September 2021. Mm -hmm. And now you are basically the US representative in the Northeast and also the East. So, sir, as to this post, sir, what is your focus area on towards the Northeast and also uh, the East? And what are you trying to bring about? What sectors do you think we, you'll concentrate on? Okay. Um, well, thanks for the question. Uh, the, the US consulate in Calcutta um, oversees 11 of the Eastern um, and Northeastern states. So all of the seven sisters up um, here in the Northeast but also West Bengal, um, Bihar, and Jharkhand. Um, we have several main areas of focus um, that we've been working on since I got here, um, including entrepreneurship, um, women's entrepreneurship, women in the workforce. Um, we obviously work on climate issues. Um, we've had a long focus on anti-trafficking in persons work that we've been doing for, for a decade. Um, we focus on media literacy and of course um, we do a lot of um, English language teaching. Um, in fact, uh, it's not just teaching English to, to, to young students, it's um, teaching courses such as you know, business, uh, business literacy so that people can, can learn um, that type of English as well. So we're very, very busy here. All right. So I mean like you just talked about media literacy and if I'm uh, not wrong uh, you were also you worked for a paper for 20 years right. you're an editor you're a publisher right. so in this modern day and age I mean like with so many new media outlets coming out and with social media being the source of information for basically everything how how do you feel is the what is the importance of the authenticity of news and also there's this new term coming out, it's called sensationalism. So do you think uh, the sensationalism could be a good thing or a bad thing? So first of all, um, I, I don't envy you and your colleagues who are in the, in the media today. It, it, things <laughs> used to be a lot simpler. Nice. Um, when I worked for a newspaper, um, you know, you, you weren't stalked by, by people, you know, if you ran into someone in the supermarket, they might say that was a nice story or it wasn't such a good story. Um, the, the trolling that you get on social media, the, the bombarding of, of different agendas that you're subjected to uh, must make it very, very difficult. Um, 
Look, sensationalism is, is, has been around forever. I mean, we had in America the, the, yellow, the yellow press, yes. which was all based on, on that sort of sensationalism. But yeah, when, when we talk about media literacy, that's what we're focusing on, is, is teaching people how to make sure that what they're publishing, what they're printing, what they're putting up on, on, on the internet is accurate and verifiable and reliable. Because, you know, one thing hasn't changed, um, and that is that uh, uh, an outlet is only as good as its reputation. So if you publish things that are verifiably not true, then people aren't going to trust you, and that's not a, a good business plan. So there's a lot of tools out there um, that are free and open source that journalists can use to verify um, information or pictures or that sort of stuff. Um, and we bring uh, people over from the United States um, and work with, with our friends and colleagues in the media just to talk about ways to keep ahead of the trends. Right. But, um, it's, a <laughs> it's, a, it's an ever-evolving field because um, there's so much new technology out there, so much new competition, and so many more people who are just getting savvier and savvier. All right, now, sir, coming back to the, uh, to the relationship part. I mean, the Indo-US relationship has seen some rocky patches, but then we have also been very close to each other. But over the, over the decade since 2014, with India's bolder approach now, would you, do you see, or do you see a beginning of a new era in the Indo-US relationship? I don't know about uh, a new beginning, but it's certainly uh, a, a global strategic uh, partnership of unparalleled um, consequence and importance. You know, in, in every relationship, there's two steps forward, one step back, but the general direction in which the US and India are moving is, is forward and positive. Um, we're working together on a lot, a host of, of um, issues, and we are now, um, experiencing huge trade numbers, um, approaching $120 billion. Um, in fact, American companies here in India um, have created more than 5 million jobs in the formal economy, which means it helps the tax base, which means it helps the infrastructure. Um, and we're working together on a host of, of issues that are, are truly um, of global significance. Um, of course, India is assuming the presidency of the G20. Um, on the 1st of December, and we're looking forward to sort of helping out there in any way we can, and, and <laughs> it's going to be a very busy year for India with, I think, hundreds of meetings yes. on dozens of subjects, so um, we congratulate India on that and look forward to a really very busy and productive year. All right. So now coming more towards focusing on the Northeast, now that the Northeast is also under your jurisdiction, I mean, like, are there any projects in the pipeline for the northeastern states and also for all the citizens residing in the northeast? So we have, we've just wrapped up a really, really interesting project up in Arunachal Pradesh, which I think lends itself to, to repetition or replication in other um, of the northeastern states. We had something called the Ambassadors Fund for Cultural Preservation. We gave a grant to a, an organization that went up into um, our natural Pradesh and worked with 17 of the indigenous tribes there to document their, their, their culture, their, their language, their arts forms, uh, because you know, some of them are really dying out. This group also worked with the Ministry of Tourism there and have produced these amazing documentaries on the, you know, the unique cultures, the unique habits, unique artistic forms existing up there in the hopes that um, it will boost tourism. Because tourism is a, a sustainable way of creating jobs. I have a friend who's in the tourism industry in, in, in Calcutta and he said for every visitor who comes to Calcutta it means 37 jobs. So all the attendant jobs um, around the hospitality um, industry can be very good for the local economy. So we've just got to um, Nagaland today but have already had conversations with people who have said, oh my goodness, you know, you could do that here, you could do this here. So um, it's certainly something that, that's uh, re replicable. The other thing that we've been doing, which we're very, very proud of, is something called the Academy for Women's Entrepreneurs. Oh, yes. um, and that is you're working with um, the OR Academy. We call it the uh, OR, okay. the, the first OR group. 
um, was uh, included some uh, women entrepreneurs from Nagaland. Uh, we're now um, thinking about all four, but um, all three um, is taking place in um, West Bengal and Sikkim. And that w is working with, um, with women entrepreneurs who have either an ongoing business or a business idea and teaching them the importance of various sort of business literary um, projects. So be it bookkeeping, be it how to sell online, be it how to make a pitch to an investor um, and go out and grow their businesses. And a number of our entrepreneurs have indeed received seed funding from, from banks or other investors. Um, and we just had a meeting with some of our alumna um, a couple of weeks back and two or three of them are, 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 are employing five or six hundred people. So these, um, we've done this in every one of the, um, the northeastern states, um, with one exception, which we're hoping to, to rectify. Um, but these types of projects, you know, um, help people help themselves. You know, there's an enormous amount of talent here in Nagaland, enormous amount of, of potential and, and great ideas. They just haven't quite been given the, you know, the opportunity to to succeed on a on a larger marketplace. So we um, we've been doing that and uh, are very very proud of that work. All right, sir. You just spoke about how uh, your Arunachal project went really well, and you spoke uh, about how you want to promote the culture and also not let it die. I mean, now you come to Nagaland too. I mean, we are we are also we also have a lot of indigenous tribes, and we do have. So, in another perspective, uh, could, do you think that uh, cultural tourism and also a new term called ecotourism, basically, you come for the nature? So, do you think that this is a viable plan for the people of the Northeast? Absolutely. Look, I mean, there's so much unique talent and beauty um, and really interesting history and culture in this part of the world that exists nowhere else. Um, People, especially Americans, are looking for um, guilt-free tourism, so ecotourism, um, and, and also a return to sort of um, a simpler way of traveling. Not all five-star, not all, you know, jet set, but um, homestays, staying in villages, um, staying in, in bed sits, and experiencing local culture is something that's really on the rise. Um, and I think it's a very, very, um, worthwhile pursuit for not just Nagaland but all the states in the Northeast because I mean truly some of the the, the customs um, and the culture and the arts that, that I've been exposed to since I've been here have been magnificent um, and then when you sit down and read about them or are told stories about them um, it's truly truly unique and um, are worth preserving obviously but also worth promoting. Um, and that's why the project in Arunachal Pradesh gives us such great hope because we worked hand in hand with the government there um, because you do need, yes. you know, you need that partnership. Um, but so yeah, I absolutely agree with you that that's viable. All right, so since you'll be attending the Hornbill Festival really soon, so I seriously hope you try the food, which is an integral part of our culture too. It I've been warned. <laughs> So it is now moving forward. So I mean, like, let's talk about your personal uh, life. I mean, you joined as the director in September 2021. That was about the time when India was reeling through a very bad pandemic stage. So, sir, has this pandemic personally brought any changes to your life and with the way you approach and look at life? Um, obviously, I mean, the pandemic has um, affected everybody profoundly. Um, I, I first visited the American Center about eight or nine years ago um, and was so taken by the, the vivacity there. There was hundreds of, of young people in there studying, um, doing their homework. There was a program, there was laughter, there was young idealism in the air. And it was such a, an inspiring place to me that, that I really worked very hard over the next eight years to try and get back to Kolkata to, to, to get this job. And then, as you say, I arrived in September, and for six months, I was the only person in the building. You know, it was dusty and quiet, <laughs> and um, the only sound was the echoes of my own footsteps. You know, it was, it, was, it was very difficult. But like everybody else, the staff, the amazing um, T 
team at the American Center had learned to, to adapt. Um, and so even through the, the course of the pandemic, we did more than 450 programs. Um, so um, we did it remotely, that's true. But because it was remote, we actually could do more outreach to places like Nagaland and to the Northeast because um, you know if you've got a connection, you can go anywhere. So we did learn to adapt from that. Um, and so professionally, I think we, we evolved. But personally, look, you know, like everyone else, um, there was a lot of time for, for introspection and for sort of weighing what, what, what was important in life. And I do hope that um, I've realized much more um, sincerely the importance of, of human relationship and human contact and human conversation, you know. Um, and luckily, you know, in Calcutta and in my tour here in India, I met the most hospitable, welcoming, and, and truly interesting people. Um, and I think I've got more out of, uh, out of it because of um, the sort of rewiring in, in my brain um, during the pandemic. Um, so yeah, and I hope, I hope you know, we keep our focus on the things that we learned during the pandemic. All right, so now talking about the Northeast, I mean, one of the main uh, problems that plagues the Northeast is the uh, reason of unemployment. So, sir, in this regard, does the U.S. Uh, embassy also have certain educational, vocational programs in which the Northeast citizens can involve themselves in? And is the U.S. also trying somehow to balance that problem? So, yeah, I mean, again, I, I mentioned a couple of the programs that um, I'll go into a little bit more detail. I mean, the, the truth is that there is an enormous amount of talent and potential here. And the, uh, the program that we did for, the, for the, um, the women's entrepreneurship, one of the things that, that we um, found to be most useful, yes, I mean, we, we gave them the, the online skills that I talked about on, yes. on booksmanship and everything. But um, it has also created an enormous network of, of alumna, um, so more than 500 women who um, now use each other as um, their bedrock, their support, because you know the, the 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 issues and the challenges and the barriers that that are faced in Nagaland are very much the same as in Bihar, are very much the same as in Arunachal Pradesh, um, and there's always somebody who's broken through, you know. And if you've got that group of five or six hundred people, who um, you can turn to in times of need, um, it's an enormous resource that I think is more valuable than 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 cash sometimes. Um, so, yes, these uh, programs that we um, work on are designed to unleash the, the existing talent um, and to create a network of very talented and self-supporting entrepreneurs who, as I mentioned, I mean, some of them are creating hundreds and hundreds of jobs. So the, the ability and the talent is here, just sometimes not the opportunity. And if we can connect the right people, you know, that's really what we do at the American Center. We, we're a convener. We, um, we bring the right people together and then get out of the way. And we do that with our anti-trafficking in persons work. You know, we, we don't come over here and say, look, you know, this is an India problem or this is a Southeast Asia problem. This is an all of us problem. You know, we have trafficking in the United States. Um, it's it's a, a source and a, a destination for trafficking. So we don't come here and point fingers. We just want to find solutions that will make this problem go away so we get the right people into a room and because you know a we're in Calcutta but b we have connections with with law enforcement with civil society with NGOs we bring people together um, to have the important dialogues to build the important relationships that are really needed like you know trafficking in persons it doesn't matter if Nagaland has got all the solutions to the problem if the problem ends up in Delhi and if there's no extradition from Delhi to Nagaland or vice versa. It has to be um, a truly networked solution. Um, and that's the same with, with, with all the issues that we're facing. We, we're just trying to bring the right people into the same room and have the discussions and the, the brainstorming that will bring solutions to these problems. So uh, you, during one of your answers, you just mentioned how the environment the US is focused on uh, saving the environment. Uh, do you think that indigenous people are better off at 
protecting their indigenous habitat rather than having people from outside come and tell the indigenous people yeah. how to conserve the environment. No, I got, it's an absolutely brilliant point. You know, we actually we have the answers to, to what's plaguing us, yes. and it's the, the tribal people, the indigenous people who've lived so closely with nature all their life, all their history, um, who have those answers. We were, we were just up in, in, in Darjeeling and talking to, to the Lepcha tribe up there who you know, just are shaking their heads at what the outside world has done to their environment. And we talked for hours about some of the very simple things that they've been doing throughout their entire history that if um, replicated by you know, the Western world, um, would go long, long way to, towards uh, mitigating some of this climate change that we're seeing. So, yeah, I agree with you absolutely. Um, and that's also part of diplomacy, is not talking and talking and talking, which I'm doing now, but um, learning how to listen to the right people <laughs> too, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, I mean, uh, we've got <coughs> us. So do you think that us indigenous people, I mean, the ones who live here, along with nature, I mean, before we actually became Christians, we were naturists and animists and for us we revered the land mm. so sometimes do you think it's okay that the indigenous people start giving lessons to the west I on do. conserving the climate i do absolutely no i think we've got a lot to learn um, from the indigenous tribes who yeah as you say not just respected nature but revered um, nature and have treated it with the respect that it deserves um, so yeah, I, I, I do, I think we should listen. And, and um, again, if there can be some sort of um, conference where we can all get together and talk about some of these solutions on a, on a grand scale, I think it would be enormously helpful for everyone. All right, so, uh, so are you a fan of uh, football? Sir? Yeah. Uh, all right, so how would you rate the US men's national team's performance this World Cup? Um, so they're really young. Yes. They're really fast and they're really fit. <laughs> I think I saw a statistic somewhere that um, against England, yes. the, the US um, team covered more ground than any other team in the history of, uh, of matches that England have played. I mean, we're just, we're everywhere. We're running around ferociously. We play with a lot of heart and a lot of grit. Um, we've got a really big challenge coming up against the Netherlands who are veterans. They've been <laughs> here many times before. Um, but I think we've got the spirit, I really do. Um, it'll be enormous fun to watch them, but um, we just have to wait and see. All right, so now that we are talking about sports, I mean, uh, the North is usually regarded as the center where we take out a lot of excellent sports people. The thing that is present here is the lack of infrastructure and the lack of expertise that is available for our citizens. So is there any chance where the U.S. consulate can come there in between and bring expertise towards the Northeast, inside the Northeast? Is there a possibility there? Well, again, one of the things, one of the reasons we're here, I mean, we're not just here um, as tourists for the Hornbill Festival, although that's going to be really eye-opening for us. But we are here to have meetings um, with, with lots of, of local people to discuss these sorts of issues and to see what opportunities there are for partnerships. I mean, we do... Um, you know, we do work with local partners on local issues, and so, yeah, we're, I mean, we're here to listen, so it's something we'll be delighted to speak to I people about. I, I think all the Naga citizens and the folks listening to this interview would feel a little more motivated to actually take sports seriously, because that is one of the biggest problems we are facing right now. We do have the talent, but we don't get the opportunity, so it would be really good if you could uh, if the U.S. Consul could do something on that, sir. So, uh, <laughs> really hoping for that. Anyway, sir, uh, this was such a nice conversation that I had with you. Uh, you're going to be experiencing the Hornbill Festival, also known as the Festival of Festivals. So, I hope that you enjoy yourself. I hope you can literally live the culture that you see. And I hope you can take some wonderful photographs. That's wonderful. Thank All you right. so much. Thank you, sir. All right, so that was uh, Mr. Adrian Pratt, who is also the director at the American Center Kolkata and also the public affairs officer of the U.S. Consulate General in Kolkata. Well, we just heard Mr. Pratt's idea on how the U.S. is looking towards the Northeast in terms of collaboration and also in terms of taking out various schemes in order to promote the Northeastern citizens and also the Eastern citizens that Sir just mentioned. And he also spoke on the ideas that could 
come about. Another point that Sir did mention was the possibility of the US involving themselves in the sports sector, especially in the Northeast. So that should be a shining light for all the Naga students. Well, for more interviews like this, keep tuning on to Onville TV. Thank you.